All right, guys, so welcome to today's live stream. Um, basically, today's uh, live stream, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, DOPA and um, HELOS that I had experienced uh, in the past because this is some question that uh, often comes up on my videos because a lot of guys are concerned about that problem and also are experiencing it. So basically, I want to tell a bit more how I overcome it and uh, what happened afterwards and how able, I was able to kind of keep my sides uh, thick and full as they are now. So. And uh, I will take our presentation first. Afterwards, I will uh, get uh, to the questions that you have been asking on YouTube channel that I think is uh, relevant and important to address. And afterwards, I will check out the chat box. And for you guys who do attend live stream live, I will also give away two bonuses at the end of the live stream. So stick to that if you want to get bonuses and also get uh, information and strategies that you can basically implement in your hero treatment right away. So, all right, so just uh, let's get started tracking into the presentation. So basically, this is uh, my year when I was around uh, 18, uh, almost 18 possibly. Uh, and at that time I had the issues on my sides already, right? You can see that uh, things were not going quite well. Also my uh, temple here line was not optimal. So there were issues going on. So, but of course at that time I didn't know what, what was happening. So I didn't even kind of notice it that much. But you can clearly see that things were not well on my sides on uh, this part here. So, and uh, basically, what happened is that uh, as time went by, things just got worse and worse. Uh, this is again another picture of me. Uh, I'm not quite sure the right time frame, but it's it's around the time when I was around 18 because I had this DOPA issue from 18 to 19 on how before I finally addressed it. So, uh, so this is again a picture from that time. Um, again, you can see it's basically that the thinning was going on around the uh, sides and lower part of the sides as well. And this is quite, uh, it's not common to lose here on the face, right? If you have a pattern baldness, it's not normal to thin out on the sides. And if there is happening some thinning on the sides, basically it means that there is something wrong, right? And uh, taking like a drug like finasteride or blocking DHT, it won't most likely help to address this problem, right? Because uh, the problem is around this area here, right? This is the area where the hell is happening and uh, i also had problems uh, on the back as well mm -hmm. uh, i tried to find his pictures today uh, to show what was happening in his back but i was not uh, able to do it because the uh, plan was to start uh, early with live stream so but possibly next time where i will make a video and show how my, my situation is back as well so you can see actually that i did have a hair loss issue going on on the back and again, that's not a normal hair loss, right? This basically means there is something uh, wrong, uh, either so there's nutrition, diet, possibly some skull problems, uh, skin problems that are causing those kind of hair loss issues. And uh, basically, I will tell a bit more how I saw them uh, later in the live stream. So, so yeah, this was around uh, when I was around uh, 18. And again, one more picture. Uh, around the same time frame. Right, you can see that th things are not going well, right? There was uh, a lot of thinning going on in, in weird places. And this is how bad it got to that point uh, when I knew that I need to do something. And basically, before, uh, at this stage, I was still not concerned about that problem. I was kind of ignoring it and uh, not uh, taking it seriously. I didn't do anything about my diet. I didn't do, do anything about uh, supplementation or uh, do any kind of measures why my sides were actually thinning out. Uh, I was not concerned about it, but uh, basically when I did see this picture here, I knew that there was a bigger problem going on and I need to find out what is happening. Um, the thing is basically that uh, when I was uh, uh, losing my hair at that time, like the thing is that when you see yourself every day in the mirror and you are kind of not self-aware of uh, how your hair are looking like, at that time I was not kind of that much self-aware, like I did see that my hair was harder to style they look at the uh, thinner, they didn't uh, stay in the place they should, and those kind of things, right? But when I finally didn't see a picture, let's say three months later, right? Because that time, back in uh, early 2000, there was not mobile phones that could take pictures. And there was uh, basically, we needed to wait to get pictures back from the camera uh, film, right? And it did take like three months, four months before we actually did go to the physical place, uh, place to actually uh, make pictures out of uh, camera film. And uh, when I finally did see what was going on on my sides, what was going on on my, my scalp, I knew that, okay, this was a problem that I need to find a solution to, right? And this is basically at this stage, uh, when I saw this picture, I did book a, a famous doctor to find out what was happening. And basically what was happening is that uh, my, first of all, my um, diet was very, uh, was lacking uh, nutrition. It 
because of poor diet, because I was not kind of self-aware importance of having a healthy diet. So basically what I did is that I had mostly kind of same foods, frozen pizzas, uh, sausages, uh, bread, uh, with no vegetables, uh, no fruits. I didn't like them, so I didn't have them. And uh, I was doing a lot of uh, things to my body and my hairs that were not good for and was causing problems uh, because it was just not, not a nutrition in my diet. There was lack of proteins, there was a lot of um, important vitamins, minerals like iron, vitamin D, uh, B12, folate, and so on. Right? All those things that are important for the hair right? because minerals like zinc, copper, iron are important. So if you have imbalances there, it's much more easier to lose hair as well because of And in my case, I had very low vitamin D levels. And <clears throat> for me, that was causing problem because <clears throat> I was uh, not getting enough sunlight. Like in Norway, it's not much sunlight. Even during summers, there is not much sunlight, right? And I was not getting enough of sunlight. And I also had a bad uh, like um, eating habits. I was also not sleeping enough. Um, and I also was kind of always staying in the inside the room, right? Even at my work, I was kind of staying in the inside. And all those things basically kind of made that I was very deficient of vitamin D, plus, of course, other supplements. Or minerals as well, but vitamin D was the most important thing that was causing my issue at that time, right? And this is around 18 and a half, 19 years old. So you can see how fast I did progress from uh, those pictures here. Like uh, it's like I'm about uh, nine months later, right, to this uh, picture here. Right? It, it went very fast. And uh, like last time, I did have uh, issues with my sides. You can also see the back as well. It was basically in uh, in 2008. Uh, this was 2008. Those pictures here, other pictures was from uh, early 2003, 2004, like it was on air. Uh, but this was from 2008. And the thing was that at that time, I basically, again, I kind of um, was getting overrated. My foods were uh, getting, again, quite bad regarding diet. And I was kind of giving up because uh, my hair was falling out. So I was giving up a lot more and I was not kind of concern what was happening with my situation. And that's why, again, I started to develop DOPA. You can see clearly that things were going in bad direction. And also behind on the scalp, things were not going well soon. And uh, basically what happened next is that I uh, solved those problems, right? I solved my nutrition problems. I solved my uh, vitamin minerals issues. And I was able to get back my sides, right? And this is again one of the side pictures when I sold previously the top situation, right? You can see it clearly it's a six months later I was had improved the sides, right? So the hair on the top and temples here line was not uh, good. Uh, they were still thinning out, but sides were okay, right? And uh, just to show you a few more pictures. This is uh, basically me uh, with scalp inflammation. Like I was losing my hair on the scalp, but my sides were okay, right? Because I had enough nutrition, I had diet that was quite optimized. And because of it, uh, I was not losing sides. Sides were solid, but it the only problem was that my scalp was inflammated. So I was losing here on the top part. All right. And again, I can show you a few more pictures just to give you a prosper, uh, perspective here. Again, I had a, a lot of scalp inflammation. You can see how stressy my hair actually looked like at that time. All right. Uh, at this time, I actually was using hair fibers as well. So it actually looks a bit, a bit better than it should look. But uh, the point here is that sides was all it, right? Sides did not have any problem. Uh, this is back in 2012, by the way, early 2012. So no problem on sides uh, because I had addressed my diet and nutrition. Again, one more picture. Uh, a lot of scalp inflammation. You can see how frigid my hair looked like. This is from 2011. Uh, frigid and lifeless, right? It was uh, impossible to style them because uh, first of all, they are falling out. Uh, um, second one was that when I tried to put some gel or some styling products, they just basically didn't stay in the place and they kind of looked lifeless and it just didn't, uh, was not possible to style them. But uh, in any case, again, you can see my sides were solid, right? So sides were okay, but uh, everything else uh, was not going well. So again, here is uh, my sides is a short, short here. Uh, this is a picture from 2011 and I was having scalp inflammation. Uh, sides were still okay, right? There's no issues on the sides. Here again from 2012 in summer, uh, not so good with the hair on top on temples and uh, hairline, but sides looked okay, right? About the same time, like a few, a few days earlier. 
And other thing I want to also show you guys is that uh, you can see how light my hair looked like on the scalp, right? And this is basically what happened is like when you see the lighter hair on the scalp or on the top part, like crown hairline temples, the so basically means that either they are uh, attack attacked by DHT or there is scalp inflammation or stress related problems or dermatitis is going on causing issues. Like in my case, it was basically scalp inflammation, dermatitis was going on um, causing problems because I was blocking DHT with canastrid. So the DHT part was not causing my immunization on lighter color of the hair, it was actually inflammation on dermatitis. Uh, this is basically uh, around uh, five months before I was able to take control of my inflammation and finally sold it. Uh, I was on the right spot, I remember, but there was a lot of problems with my scalp going on uh, at that time. I remember, as, like, the thing is that when you feel itchiness in the scalp, continuous itchiness in the scalp it never goes away. So it basically means that there is uh, some uh, information going on. And this was definitely a problem for me, right? Like, there is itchiness, even if I didn't do anything, like, let's say I didn't go to the sleep at night, I still felt itchiness in my scalp. Right? And this is not, not normal. So if you do have some issues in the scalp, basically it means that there is something that needs to be addressed because scalp should not feel an itch as also. But anyway, again, you can see color, a very light color compared to uh, my sides, right? And sides are solid, right? Sides, uh, when I saw my inflammation deficiencies, when I, uh, or nutrition deficiencies, when I understood that what was wrong with my nutrition regarding uh, minerals and vitamins, I was able to gain those sides back and basically keep them, right? And it was uh, even done before I started with finasteroid. So again, this is a picture of me with the sides. Uh, now I kind of jump back and forth in timeline, but this is a picture from of me back in um, of November 2008, like uh, one month after I started with Finasteroid. Like again, you can see how thin my top was, but my sides were full and thick. Right? So again, to show you basically that uh, it's not about blocking DHT if you are having problems with sides, it's about addressing underlying causes of it. Again, one more picture, let's see. This was again around the same time frame, around the 2008, end of 2008. Again, sides look okay. My top heel and temples were not okay, but sides were okay. Uh, and this was again around the three weeks, one month into Finasteroids. Again, this was uh, actually before Finasteroid. This was, uh, uh, I would say, like um, earlier 2008, possibly the beginning of the year. Um, and uh, again, you can see. I look very fidgy on the, my top part, but sides were okay. All right. And this was my last picture regarding my conditions. And this was uh, around 2006, right? A lot of problems going on the scalp top part, but sides are still okay. Right? And again, it was because I was addressing uh, my nutrition, my diet was better, right? And that's basically led to that I was not losing here on the sides. They had improved and they were fully recovered. Right? So basically, if you solve the underlying issues like uh, nutrition deficiencies, like your diet optimization, sleep patterns, stress, right, all those things, then sites will come back. Right? That's kind of my point here. And the last thing I want to show you before I move to the questions is basically one of those guys uh, in the program and progression after uh, around three and three and a half months in the program uh, from uh, quite aggressive metal and uh, to uh, nice recovery, like I want to kind of show you a bit close up. Basically, you can see all the small hairs coming back. Let's see if it's possible to zoom in more, all right? And this is a guy in his uh, late 20s uh, who has been suffering hair loss since his early 20s. So uh, almost for the 10 years. So you can see all, all those nice hairs that are coming back, right? Compared to the situation before, all right? They are like, the thing is that those hair go different, into different cycles, right? So that they don't become dark right away, it takes a bit of time uh, because they first need to kind of uh, change from light values here to dark uh, hairs. It takes time, but you can see that uh, things are improving, right? And this is basically how things should be after uh, three and three and a half months of uh, blocking the EST and applying like oxidants. And addressing inflammation, of course, and doing diet changes on scalp conditions, all this stuff as well, on the lifestyle changes. All right, so uh, this was, um, uh, one thing I wanted to address. Uh, next one, basically, I will take up the questions that you have been asking in the videos before I uh, jump on uh, on the chat live. So, live stream questions is basically about the first one uh, I wanted to take up is uh, uh, I have oily scalp. I use can I use omega three? 
uh, supplements, does it increase illness in the scalp? Uh, no, it doesn't, because um, import, it is important to remember that fatty acids are important for your skin. Uh, so if you have a lack of fatty acids uh, in your diet, basically what will happen is that your skin will look very glossy, uh, a bit strange, and you most likely will also scal have some skull problems like sebum production, oil production, and those kind of things. So fatty acids in diet are important. Right? And uh, omega-3 is one way to address it. You can take also uh, foods like uh, fish, for example, like mackerel uh, is rich in uh, omega-3 or, uh, or other things like krill is rich in omega-3. Uh, also uh, like uh, different nuts is uh, rich in omega-3. So there are, there are several ways you can address it, but it is important to have enough fatty acids in your diet uh, because it will help with your conditions, it will help with the inflammation and also look of the scalp itself. Uh, next one is about uh, bad lifestyle habits and uh, because of it, hairline has uh, preceded. So let's see what is the question. Uh, okay, so you have been watching, following my videos and uh, your hairline has almost come back. I'm glad your results so quickly. Thanks to you. You mindly. Okay, awesome. That's great. That's great to hear that you are having a positive response to treatments. Uh, let's see. I've been on minoxidil and translate for four months uh, and my hair here uh, back. Can I stop with minoxidil gradually without shedding? Yes, uh, I would suggest to, if you have been on finasteride for four months and you have seen decent results, just stick a bit more out and see how much more you can squeeze out of it, right? Because four months results are not final results, it just keeps improving. So basically what it means is that if you have seen good results after four months, it will most likely get better and better. So and if you don't have skull problems, like inflammation or those kind of things, then uh, I don't see a reason why why you should stop with minoxidil at uh, this stage, right? And uh, of course, if you do want to stop with minoxidil, then you do need to top it down gradually, right? You cannot stop it at this stage right away, but you need to top it gradually to kind of make your hair less dependent on it. So, uh, and uh, it should be possible without uh, experience shedding. But make sure that you do address online conditions like DHT with finasteride, that's one way, but you also need to be sure that there is nothing else like uh, skull problems or uh, nutrition problems, like I mentioned earlier, this live stream that uh, hasn't been addressed yet. So. Uh, hey Alex, what brand of finasteride are you using? Propecia or Proscar? Uh, currently, I'm taking uh, Proscar, so, but I have been in the past always taking Propecia and uh, it, it works, right? It's basically the same same thing as long as the, as the pills are not broken, as long as they are not expired, and as long as they are not fake, right? So basically, what it means is that always make sure that you get legit finasteride from legit sources, uh, don't buy it on the internet, and also make sure that you take that is not expired and pills are not broken, right? So because those things will affect the effectiveness. So if, if everything is okay, then they will work. So it doesn't matter if you take Propecia or Proscar or any other genetic brands. So. All right. Uh, will natural DHT blockers or ketones or shampoo cause hair shedding phase similar to Finasteride? Again, if the hair are weak to begin with, let's say if you have had uh, hair follicles that has been weakening with DHTs, that has been weakening with inflammation, scalp, or dermatitis, or there is other things going on, then yes, they will shed because you just by adding some light stimulators or some, some light DHT blockers, uh, the hair follicles will react and they will shed. Right? Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a light way to do it or you're doing it light way, like with um, natural DHT blockers and ketones or shampoo, says if the hair are weak to begin with, they will have a shedding effect. So. Uh, question about do you use supplements, vitamins for here? Yes, I do. And I see like basically supplements and vitamins and minerals as a kind of support function, right? They are not the game changers, but they will make results better. And it also will help you to get the faster recovery by taking supplements, nutrition, uh, nutrition supplements and vitamins and minerals, right? So th they are important in their own way. And especially it's important that you are uh, sure that you have addressed all the possible vitamins and minerals that if one is deficient in can cause hair loss, right? So those needs to be optimized and addressed, but also other supplements, let's like, say like a biotin um, and other things like omega-3, for example, as I mentioned earlier, they are also important because they give additional support for inflammation, they give additional support for uh, reducing shedding and so on. So I think those things will make your recovery faster and results better. Uh, that's my experience. Uh, can I take creatine supplements along with uh, applying minoxidil, a solution to my hair? 
again, ideally, from my experience, uh, creatine always causes me shedding, right? And it doesn't matter even if I'm taking finasteride, I still experience increased shedding from creatine. So it basically shows that creatine is not something you want to add to the treatment, even if you apply minoxidil, you don't want to add uh, creatine supplements to the treatment. But there are other ways you can uh, boost the testosterone levels and uh, basically get better gym performance, uh, like by minerals, uh, other things uh, without taking creatine supplements. So that's kind of my, my proposal. So again, again, it's all about what is the most important for you. Is it building muscles is important for you or keeping your hair? So you kind of need to find out a uh, middle way in that situation. So. Is it possible to reverse uh, minor hair loss with just demoraling on the hairline? Uh, like if you are just doing light mic needling on the hairline without adding any growth stimulants, then uh, I don't think it will help much. You most likely will need to do some bounding uh, to see results. Like there are studies about bounding. Uh, I personally don't do bounding. I do uh, mic needling for observation, right? So I, I don't do it for a regrowth. I do it for observation on top of the like minoxidil. So, so this kind of a bit different in my case. But if you want to see results from uh, on reversing hairline from uh, by using mic needling like a derma roller, then you need to basically do most likely more invasive uh, with a uh, different method. So. Uh, hey Alex, uh, is it better to apply in the morning or the bad time? Uh, I would suggest to apply in the evening time because I can remember that when you apply in the morning, uh, you can expose your scalp to weather changes, to uh, uh, environment to uh, other activities like um, exercise, gym, uh, stress, sweat, right? All those things that can affect the minoxidil, right? Because the minoxidil needs to stay on the scalp for minimum four hours to have any effect, right? So if you get something, let's say too much sweat on the scalp or you get uh, rain on the scalp, uh, it kind of uh, messes it up and it will become less effective. That's why I like to apply minoxidil like uh, one hour, two hours before sleep, because I know that it will stay in my scalp all night long and it will have effect right? and this is something i've been doing it basically since the uh, beginning of minoxidil application i never did a two times application i always have done one time one time a day application and uh, it has been most effective for me right? but it's important like i said to make sure that there is nothing else that can uh, affect I mean, the effectiveness right? because if there is something externally that happens in your scalp um, then it will be less effective and most likely won't be able to see results so. Uh, next question about minoxidil, does it lose effectiveness over time? No, it doesn't. But again, uh, you need to be sure that you address all the possible angles of your hair loss to make sure that they actually uh, do work. Right? If there is something that comes up and causes issues, uh, like you're not blocking DHT, but you just have a minoxidil, or you are having skull problems or dermatitis or inflammation or uh, nutrition deficiencies or stress problems, and you apply minoxidil, it just won't solve those problems and the hair will fall out, right? It won't be a long-term solution. It may have a little poof in the first six months, one year, but afterwards those online conditions will catch up and cause issues and you won't be able to sustain results with just minoxidil. Right? But if you address all other issues, then you can get results with minoxidil and uh, they won't uh, basically fall out again, right? as long as you keep addressing online conditions. So. Uh, what if you leave minoxidil for too long on the scalp? Uh, yes, like, Again, I have, I'm usually leave it for 24 hours, right? Because uh, uh, I apply it, I go to sleep, and then the next day I basically go ahead with my day, and then the evening time I wash my hair and reapply minoxidil. But for some, again, it can uh, cause uh, clogged pores, and in that case, you most likely will need to wash it out during the day, right? Earlier, uh, let's say after the uh, evening or after the sleep, you wash it out because uh, if you clog the pores, then basically it's not optimal either. So uh, you need, need to kind of find out uh, your own thing because uh, our scalp conditions for everyone is a bit different, right? So my scalp conditions is most likely different than yours. And if your scalp is, let's say, in the sensitive side or is the dry side and your uh, pores can easily be clogged, then basically you need to kind of make sure that you do wash out enough steel earlier during the day uh, than I do because I don't have the problems. Let's see, next question about um, uh, can the minoxidil derma roller keep DHT away from the scalp? Uh, no, it uh, can't. Uh, so you need to address DHT from somehow, either topically or internally. 
uh, like in my case, I do it by Finastery. So. Uh, question about do you feel different difference in mood or energy when you start taking finasteride uh, or compared to when you take finasteride no i don't feel any difference for me basically if i do take my two weeks breaks every six months uh, i don't see or feel any difference regarding my mood or energy levels it's basically the same right but, but again there is so many things i can't blame regarding mood and energy right it's not just about finasteride it can be a bunch of other uh, things that can play in a cause that one has low energy like a diet is a big thing, uh, sleep habits, sleep patterns, uh, stress management, uh, nutrition, supplementation, right? All those things play in. Like, for example, you, in times when I have a lot of energy uh, or I need to have more energy, I possibly add uh, MCT oil to my treatment. I add some mineral mix to my treatment that helps with um, energy boost, right? So there are several things you can kind of uh, engineer to make energy levels uh, better and optimize your mood as well, right? Because basically, there are so many natural things that can cause uh, changes regarding mood and energy levels. It's not just about finasteride. That's kind of my point. So, so you need to look into other options. Because for me, it's uh, it's it doesn't make any difference if I stop with finasteride for two weeks. Uh, next question about do you apply finasteride and minoxidil or plain minoxidil? I apply plain minoxidil. I don't like to mix them together. I don't see the point of doing it. And uh, basically what I do is that I apply Minoxidil and I take uh, Finasteride Pyrrol always. I microdose it for you guys who don't know it. Uh, let's see, next question about... Uh, hey Alex, what kind of foods and drinks should we avoid? What contains sugar and what uh, on the others? Like again, you need to basically avoid the things that can trigger your inflammation, your uh, dermatitis. Yeah, and uh, basically cause any shedding like sodas, energy drinks, uh, possibly protein powder that is uh, too anabolic with uh, a lot of branchy dominant seeds in it. Uh, other things like uh, even things like uh, coffee and uh, chocolate can trigger fungus for some, right? So you basically need to be very careful uh, and make sure that you find out what kind of triggering foods uh, you may have problem with and remove them for a diet. Right? Um, basically, the way I did it, for example, uh, when I was having skin problems like inflammation in my scalp, is that I rebuilt my diet from ground up. I started to kind of add safe, safest foods that I knew about. Like I found the safest foods that I didn't react to at all. And then I kind of keep building my diet slowly, one by one, adding a new foods uh, on a weekly basis. And um, when I had done it, then I basically, uh, when I knew that this diet didn't cause any additional inflammation, and by inflammation, I mean basically tension in my scalp, Itchiness, redness when I uh, had uh, consumed those foods, then I knew that I could add more, right? And then basically, when I finally had the solid diet, then I could uh, slack a bit and have some, let's say, pizza from time to time or hamburger from time to time, and it wouldn't cause any inflammation in my scalp, right? But you need to kind of make sure that your diet is solid and uh, there is nothing that can cause any uh, immune responses or uh, fungal issues on the scalp or those kind of things. So. All uh, right, uh, let's see if there is more questions here. A question about, uh, can I take a break for uh, from Finasteride for two weeks once a year? Uh, and if after uh, restarting, is it, will it here shed because of it? Uh, no, it won't. Like I, have, like I said, I have been doing uh, my breaks from Finasteride to twice a year for uh, last eight, nine years, and it doesn't cause any additional shedding, so, so it should be fine. So. All right, guys, there's also other questions under uh, uh, YouTube videos. I will check up uh, the chat now and see what kind of questions you've been asking live. Um, I can also add, by the way, the bonuses as well. Let's see more. Uh, here is uh, for you guys who want to have a call with me about my program. If you uh, seriously consider addressing your here loss and getting my help to doing so, you can schedule a call here. And uh, I also will add uh, two bonuses under here as well. Uh, the thing is that uh, doing this here loss issue by yourself, it's not easy, right? Because there are so many angles that you need to address and understand to actually get back your here. So uh, if you getting help from someone who has done it himself, I think uh, is so much easier and uh, helps you getting results so much faster. 
So that's why I strongly recommend basically joining my program, guys. Um, let's see, here is one bonus, and here is a second bonus. Like those are the basically bonuses you've been asking about in the videos about how to do derma rolling. And the other one is basically about uh, how to uh, do scalp cleaning. Uh, all right, um, let's see. First question about is about uh, eating, uh, consuming a uh, finger cake for here. Uh, yes, I did try it many, many years ago. Uh, it did not work. Uh, that's my, my experience of it. But again, uh, it didn't uh, cause any shedding or it didn't cause any inflammation either. So if you want to add it, um, it's on try it. It's something that you can do it. But I didn't see any benefits from uh, consuming it. So. Uh, what do you think about clearing the scalp with a comb in the shower every day? Yes, it's a basically good thing because when you do uh, scalp cleaning, you do several things. First of all, you increase blood circulation in your scalp. You also remove buildups uh, from the scalp, right? Because uh, skin itself it has a buildups like natural buildups in the skin happens from time to time so you need to remove them uh, because they also do cause issues and the other one is basically you rebalance your sebum production in the scalp as well right? so often uh, what happens that sebum can also cause inflammatory issues in the scalp so when you do uh, regular uh, cleaning of scalp by comb it will be helpful for uh, in several different ways for your situation and some even see uh, some regrowth from it because uh, it increases blood circulation, it removes those buildups, and it also helps to rebalance uh, sebum production. So uh, I, I would definitely recommend it. Right? And it's a part of my program as well, doing uh, scalp cleaning on a regular basis. Um, I'm using Finastri last five months, and after three months here, uh, Paul was controlled. But after five months here, Paul resumed. What has happened, I don't understand. Um, again, this is most likely something else that is causing your hair loss. Because every time when I started to have those kind of problems, uh, there was something else that came up with either inflammation, dermatitis to my scalp, or I had done some um, lifestyle things like um, uh, not having my sleep habits or stress levels, and those things were causing issues, not uh, DHTs that was causing a problem. So remember that there is so many things besides uh, DHTs that can cause hair loss. Uh, and if you take finasteride and you know that it's legit finasteride, and it's basically is the same thing also you have been taking all the time and it's not broken or expired then there is something else that is causing issue and uh, basically that's why you are experiencing these problems uh, can handstands help your loss uh, i would say doing a comb or uh, brushing your scalp is much better option to address uh, blood circulation uh, compared to handstands uh, handstands can help with scalp tension i've done it in the past when i had uh, scalp tension from my inflammation uh, uh, but I don't think it will help you with hair loss itself. Question about do you take finastri in the night or morning? Uh, I take it as a night time, like a couple hours before I go to sleep, I take finastri because I, I feel like, first of all, taking it every day is most important because you keep like uh, your dish levels low all the time. And second one, it's much easier to remember it. All right? So you basically don't, uh, don't skip a dose here and there, but you kind of keep it uh, consistent on um, taking the same time. At the evening time, um, I find it's the best, uh, best way to do it. And uh, I have always taken a evening time as well. Like, I, uh, did you stop uh, minoxidil? Uh, I have stopped it several times. Like, uh, in January this year, I did take uh, like a test of applying three times a week uh, from January to uh, end of April without any experiences of shedding. So um, it was basically kind of stopping cycling it. And uh, when I restarted it uh, on a daily basis again, in the beginning of May, I did notice increased shedding from it, but uh, up until application of three times a week. The point is that basically when you have uh, kind of applied minoxidil for a long time and you have seen results and your hair are getting strong uh, and they getting permanent, then you can't, st can't start to kind of experiment with it, right? As long as you have addressed online conditions, you can start experiment with minoxidil. And in those cases, you don't need to uh, keep applying it every day uh, to try to stimulate hair regrowth, right? It's, uh, basically, because if you have been applying, let's say, for uh, some time, you most likely have uh, squeezed out maximum potential of it, right? And uh, just applying more of it uh, won't uh, be any beneficials for your scalp or getting squeezing out more growth. Uh, question about uh, chronic suffering from mild, uh, very mild temporal recession on uh, applying topical minoxidil on thermal uh, 
awesome period of my temples back. Uh, I don't think it's the right way to do it, right? Because uh, remember that um, uh, if you don't like, you need to find out what is actually root cause of uh, that you're experiencing mild recession in your temples, right? And minoxidil and dermal roller can grow them back, yes. But uh, if you don't address and find out what is actually causing the problem, then what will happen is that uh, you stop with it or you keep applying minoxidil and dermal and it suddenly stops working. Right, because the underlying conditions are catching up and causing issues. And if you don't address online conditions, then applying uh, Noxley and doing microneedling, it can help you for uh, six months, one year, uh, sometimes even two years, but at uh, some point, eventually the underlying conditions will catch up and cause issues. Right? So you need to find out why you actually are using or uh, receiving temples in the first place. Is it because of mental baldness or is it some other factors like scalp inflammation or uh, nutrition deficiencies or stress or those kind of things. What is your option about PRP? Is it helpful? Like, uh, again, uh, from talking with uh, uh, two, three thousand guys for last uh, four years, uh, if not even more, uh, I would say that there is just a very few uh, percentage who actually had any positive effect from the PRP. Right? So uh, for most guys, it doesn't work, uh, and it's most uh, often is just a waste. Uh, and uh, there are very few who actually have benefits from it, but they are very few. So, so I don't see a reason to try it. Uh, what do you think about error? Uh, again, this is a one way to address antigens, uh, and uh, I personally don't use it because I find it too invasive. Uh, and again, if you feel that you don't want to use take other DRC blockers, then it is option, so. Uh, question about uh, feeling uh, some uh, mild stretching in the sides tight um, uh, from the relative transtrade, or is it just placebo effect? Uh, again, it's hard to say, right? You need to possibly check up, uh, check up a bit more about it, uh, but, um, uh, it's hard to say because it's so easy to blame everything on finastri. At the same time, finastri do have several side effects, and uh, it's not for everyone to take it. Right? So um, it's a bit hard to say if it's just caused by finastri. A question about Instagram. I don't have Instagram. I don't use it. Um, uh, hey Alex, I've been taking finastri for months uh, now, and my hair loss got only worse. Also, I have a separate dermatitis. Does it mean that the uh, severe dermatitis blocks my regrowth? Um, and uh, I have a very strong genes for mental wellness. Yes, like you need to basically solve that seborrheic dermatitis issue first before you can actually like do any treatment at all, right? Because severe dermatitis, uh, in, combination, in combination especially with the mental wellness, will uh, make things worse and will make treatment much less effective, right? So you need to basically uh, solve those problems, right? So, so find a solution to severe dermatitis, uh, and then you can start with uh, finasteride and possibly minoxidil in the future to grow back as a hair, right? Because if there is any problems in the scalp, uh, treatment will be ineffective, right? And this is basically the reason I know it is that I was taking finasteride for two years with awesome results, and then I got scalp inflammation. And uh, what happened is that I lose my 50% of my gains uh, uh, six months later. And uh, that happened because of scalp inflammation, not because of DHT. So you need to. Um, basically, solve severe dermatitis in your case as well before you can actually squeeze out the results from blocking DHT or applying uh, growth stimulants. Uh, can finasteride work on temporary? Yes, it can. Like it's not like a minox deal; it won't uh, grow back um, uh, like um, amazing regrowth on the temples but it will thicken up existing here around temples and it will uh, appear much better and thicker. So this will happen to me. Like uh, finasteride did appear, made my hair appear thicker and more, right? Around the ex existing here. But what minoxidil did is basically it's uh, grow back the hair in the areas that had been bald for a long time. So remember the minoxidil is basically a DHT blocker and minoxidil is growth stimulant. So, uh, you basically, if you if your hair loss has been going on for a short time and you start with finasteride, then you possibly can get uh, decent results with it uh, standalone. But if your hair loss has been going on, like in my case, for uh, many many years, then you need some kind of growth stimulant as well to recover areas that are empty. So, uh, 
Uh, question about Halex. I use minoxidil and clonazepam for two months. My hair regrowed, uh, but other areas uh, has not uh, regrown. What problem? Like again, two months is uh, early, right? And uh, remember that, for example, temples hair line usually recover first. Afterwards, mid scalp and the crown recover last. Right? So, so basically, they have different timelines for the reason. So uh, two months is very early to say anything. Like you need to basically wait at least three months, four months to kind of determine how effective things are. And sometimes even six months and you need to be sure that you address all the other un underlying conditions that can cause any problems, uh, right? Like I said, dermatitis, inflammation, all those things has to be addressed to actually squeeze out the results as much possible. <clears throat> Uh, hey Alex, what do you recommend for better scalp and hair health? <clears throat> uh, like again, uh, good uh, diet is very important. Uh, good amount of fatty acids in the diet, good amount of minerals, vitamins in it. Uh, and of course, uh, making sure that you uh, have optimized uh, well, your whole treatment plan. Right? You cannot have any scalp problems. Uh, you need to wash your scalp as often as possible. Like I personally do wash my scalp daily. I find it's best for my scalp uh, because if scalp is not uh, clean, uh, basically what will happen is that uh, it will be more easy to get problems. Right? So you need to be sure that you wash your scalp uh, often. And uh, if you do wash it on a daily basis, don't use hard shampoos every day. Like for example, you need to use some sort of hot shampoos, uh, let's say once a week, uh, twice a month uh, because you need to have the DP cleaning effect, but uh, on a day, everyday base, you need to use a light everyday shampoo. So. All right. Hey, I regrow back my hair by using Pinastrium and Dermarolin, uh, everything, uh, but I stopped using all of those as I regrow my hair. And now my hair is, uh, have been falling out at double rate can I grow them back? Yes, you can, but you need to get back to the treatment, right? You cannot stop. Like, the thing is that you can stop with some part of the treatment after some time, right? But you cannot stop all of it, right? Because DHT will still be there. Uh, scalp conditions will most likely get worse if you are not addressing them. So you need to <clears throat> keep implementing and keep uh, addressing those problems, right? Like with minoxidil and dermaroling, you can stop and cycle it. But with other parts of the treatment, you need to be consistent with it. And uh, to answer your question, if you can grow back your hair after stopping and uh, experiencing hair fall, yes, you can. But you need to basically take action and uh, get back to the treatment. Like, if you value your hair, if you want to keep them, uh, then you need to do uh, continuously something about it. So. All right. So um, let's see. I will answer a few more questions about uh, uh, before I end today. So what to do about DOPA? Again, you need to watch the beginning of the live stream. I talk about uh, my DOPA situation and it was basically caused by nutrition deficiencies, uh, by poor diet. Uh, and when I saw those things, I was able to recover my sides even before I started with finasteride, right? So, uh, and also when, when I was having my worst stages of inflammation, I still was not triggering DOPA again, right? So basically it is so important if you have a DOPA situation addressed by finding out the root cause of it and uh, get your diet on the back on track, get your supplementation uh, right, and it most likely will help you to solve it. So. All right. Uh, does coming here with a wide uh, tooth comb good for hair growth? Like again, uh, I think I answered this question earlier today. And it's basically that uh, if you do uh, comb your hair or brushing your hair, what happens is that you increase blood circulation, you also remove buildups, and you also uh, rebalance sebum production. Right? So there are several good things about doing uh, some kind of uh, scalp cleaning or doing a comb on your scalp. Uh, and I personally uh, do it quite frequent. Uh, and uh, I also recommend for the guys in my program to do it as well, right? Because there is many benefits from doing it. But you cannot do it if your hair are weak. Like, let's say if you do have a shedding problem or you're having scalp inflammation, you cannot do uh, brushing or uh, combing your scalp uh, with a wild to uh, comb, right? Because it will basically pull out the hair. Right? Because the hair are weak, you need to uh, solve the hair uh, problem first. And then when your hair is okay, they are strong and scalp is healthy, then you can do 
crushing on the comb on your scalp and it won't cause any damage. So. <clears throat> Uh, does increased testosterone levels lead to hair loss? Like again, if it's a naturally uh, high testosterone, testosterone levels, then most likely not. But if you do it uh, by other methods, um, then most likely it will, yes. What do you think about oral casserole? Uh, I don't think it's necessary to take it. Like uh, oral casserole has uh, other, uh, like, functions to take it, right? But it's, I don't see any reason to take it regarding uh, here, uh, because uh, there is some side effects that are not pleasant with castro if you do drink it uh, orally. So. Uh, what kind of finasteride brand is good? Like again, you need to be sure, uh, as, like any finasteride brand, as long as the finasteride is good, right? you need to be sure that it's, it is actually finasteride you are getting, and that it is legit, right? that it actually contains finasteride, and the pills are not broken or expired. Uh, that can make it less, less effective, right? So uh, those things are basically important to find out. So. Uh, how often do you microneed them correctly? Like from January to end of April, I was doing it once a week. Now I do it daily. Right? But uh, remember that I, when I do microneeding, I do it uh, for observation of minoxidil. I don't do it for uh, bonding or uh, any other. Uh, things like growth stimulation, right? So it's different how I do it compared to others. And there are some uh, videos where I show, um, if you search up, uh, you can see how I do my healing myself. So. All right, guys. So those are the questions I will answer today. And um, thanks for attending. Enjoy the, uh, the bonuses. And also for you guys who want to join my program and know more about it, you can schedule a call basically in the links that I added earlier uh, in the video. Uh, I will read, uh, read it now.